at this point, <clears throat> I'd like to add the stairs uh, that we're going to use to get down into the basement. We're eventually going to add some stairs that go up to the second floor after we add the second floor. So let's begin with the stairs to the basement. Uh, the first thing that we'll need to do is go to the top of slab view, which is the basement plan. And I need to have some kind of reference as to uh, where things are from the first floor plan. So I'm going to go to the underlay section in the floor plan view uh, properties and change that from none to first floor. Now what we're looking at here is the actual top of the roof and the ridge of the roof so we can't see the uh, walls. So I'm going to turn off the roof in this view by just typing at my keyboard VV, which is the quick reference, I guess, to visibility and graphics. Another way to get to this is to go to view and hit um, visibility and graphics on that ribbon. It does the same thing. I'm going to scroll down until I see roofs and just remove the checkbox next to roofs and then hit apply. OK. So now I can see my walls. I'm going to design a set of stairs that is going up from this direction to here, uh, to the first floor level. So I need to um, go to the architecture tab and the first thing I actually have to do is create a stair system that meets with the residential code rather than the building code. So all the stairs that are in Revit as a default meet the um, commercial building code 711, 7 inch rise, 11 inch tread, but residential code is not quite as strict and we want to make these stairs as small as we can. So I'm going to create uh, a new stair type by clicking on edit type I'm going to duplicate this set of stairs and just rename it IRC closed. Okay. Now that I have a brand new version of or copy of the original uh, because I wanted to leave this one alone, I could make the changes to the maximum riser height and add the 0.75 inches to that and I can change the tread depth to 10 inches and then just hit OK. I know it seems simple but uh, that is actually going to make a difference as to what we can fit here in the space. Now the next thing that we want to take a look at is what level we're going from. Base level should be set to top of slab which is in the foundation and then what level we are going to top level is set to top of concrete which is incorrect. It should be going to first floor. Now once we make that adjustment you'll see that a desired number of risers is set to 14 but we could tighten that a bit and we can set that to 13 and we'd still be within our um, 7 3 quarter maximum riser height. If we put a value in here that does not meet the IRC code that we just put in, like I'll put in 12, it's going to give us a warning or it will show us that we have 8 and 3 quarters, uh, 3 eighths of an inch. So that exceeds our, um, our rule in this case. So I'm going to set that desired number to 13 and if we were to um, uh, convert that to a decimal value, it ends up being about 0.73 inches. So it's just under 0.75 or just under 3 quarters of an inch. So I know that I can get away with 13 risers instead of 14. So I'm going to apply those or it automatically just apply them and now I'm going to kind of eyeball about where I want my stairs to start and then I'm just going to drag. You'll see that if I don't drag all the way to the end it doesn't create all the steps and it gives me a count right here at the end where you can see the grade lettering. It uh, gives me a count of how many risers I've created as I go along. When I get to the point where it doesn't need to create any more risers, it shows me that I have 13 risers created, zero remaining. That's what I want to see and I want to make sure these are straight as well. So look for that blue snap line. So once the stairs have been created, I can make adjustments. 
So I might want to move the stairs, for instance, so that I can move them so that the center of the stairs are um, positioned on the center of the wall. I can also expand the width of the stairs so that it meets the width of the walls. Okay. Um, the stairs, however, I don't believe need to be this wide. So I'm going to make some slight adjustments to my wall locations um, and in that process figure out exactly how much room we need or have for the stairs in here. Uh, so I'm hit, going to hit the checkbox and that gets me out of the stairs and I'm going to go to my first floor and make some slight adjustments. I'm noticing that according to the plan that this dimension here should be um, uh, if we add it up it should be about 12 feet so I'm gonna make that 12 feet oh and I needed to make sure this is going to the center so let's adjust that again and then the second wall is supposed to be four feet from that one. So I'm going to click on this wall now, make sure it's going to the center. And actually, in this unique situation, I know that I'm going to be adding the second floor wall that's going to have a dormer wall. And I actually want the outside edge of this wall to line up with that dormer wall. So it, uh, and the dormer wall is going to act like an exterior wall. So I actually want it to be 16 feet. So I'm going to um, have this go to the outside face of core here, which is the outside face of the 2 by 4 and then I'm going to adjust that for 4 feet. And now I think I've got it correctly laid out um, so that this dimension from here to the outside edge of this wall is 16 feet. The door just needs to be adjusted and put into the center. And um, now I can go back into that um, foundation view or top of slab view and make corrections to my stairs. So I'm going to move them. So I select the stairs first, hit the move button, and I want to move them so that they're inside that wall cavity, that wall space. Um, now I want to uh, set the width of the stairs properly. So I actually have to set the stairs and edit them again, kind of go into that sketch mode and then I should be able to bring them to the um, inside edge of the walls on both sides. And you can you can lock that if you would like with the walls. Um, I do want you to be careful not to lock too many things because when you lock too many things then um, you end up uh, over constraining your, your model. So I think I'm just going to leave that alone for now and then if I feel like I need to lock it later I will. Now um, we may end up moving this wall right here backwards or forwards depending on the stairs we design for the second floor. What we want to make sure of is that these stairs here, the, the, the uh, nosing of the stairs is not less than three feet away from this back foundation wall. Um, and we've got plenty of room now so I'm not worried about it. But Let's take a look at what this looks like in section. Remember we created that section so we could look at things now we can see in section that the stairs are meeting the floor correctly and we have the correct number of risers. Uh, the problem is we don't have an opening in the floor for the stairs. So I'm going to go back to the first floor now and I'm going to create an opening for my stairs. So I'd select the floor itself, edit the boundary, and I'm just going to simply create, I can use this rectangle tool for instance, a rectangle that wraps right around the stairs and the inside edges of the walls. When I hit the green checkbox, now that opening, let's go ahead and take a look at it, is, is shown in the section. We can see that we have the headroom now to walk up the stairs. We're not going to bonk our heads on the floors um, and get up into that sec uh, first floor space. So we're going to do something very similar to get from first floor to second floor when we create it. Um, but that's the basics of stairs. Now there's more to stairs. We're going to be editing them and changing their shape and um, modifying them as we do some more complicated projects. But that's the basics. You see how important it is for us to understand 
how um, the stairs get calculated and understand where they're going from and where they're going to and then the code requirements that are involved with it.